right, Mr. Woods, I'm stuck. I'm not really sure I know how to do number 19. Ooh, the last one on our homework last night. Uh, all right, well, let's give it a go. Uh, looks like from the way that this problem is worded, uh, we've got this lake that I'm looking at. Uh, they gave me some information about the pollution in the lake. They gave me some information about the size of the lake. But ultimately, what they're asking me for is a singular quantity. They're asking me for the total mass in kilograms of the mercury in the lake. Well, if they're asking me for a singular quantity as an answer, I, I'd better start with a singular quantity. Uh, what do I know about this lake, Mrs. May? All right, so like we're, we're given some information about it. Like it's 100 square miles, and apparently, you know, it's, it's got some depth to it. So it's 20, whoa, I should write down what the actual paper says, 20.0 <laughs> feet deep. And we know something about the pollution in the lake. It tells us in there that the pollution in the lake is a half a, oh, there's a little funny symbol, Mr. Woods. Ooh, that's a little cursive U almost, right? Uh, it's a microgram per milliliter. Cool, well, just looking at the way that you've drawn this picture, it looks like the quantity that I know is how much water there is in this lake. I can see that in the picture. Uh, the, the volume of this lake, but how can I figure out the volume, Mrs. May? Well, I notice, of course, we have an area and a height, so if we take the area times the height, we could get the volume, oh. except there's a little problem. I see that our units aren't matching. So and that's miles. That's miles. <laughs> uh, probably the easiest way to do this is to make those 20 feet match the other squared unit, so let's just convert the 20 feet into miles. And of course, we already remember. 5,280 feet in a mile. And now, Mr. Woods <laughs> is going to calculate that for you. I don't know what that is. Uh, so, ooh, this is going to be fun. I have point zero zero. Tell me when you want me to stop. Three, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven. Oh, I think that's way too many sig figs. We better, we better cut that off. So I see we're starting with three significant figures. This is a definition, so we gotta round this to three significant figures. So I'm done, right? Awesome. Oh, wait, we don't actually have a measurement yet. Uh, let's actually throw some numbers <laughs> in there. Okay, how about that? Great. Now, I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead and just for funsies, uh, keep this number in my calculator for just a moment. This and number. Yeah, that number that uh, gave my calculator gave me. Uh, we'll see what we might do with that in just a moment. Even though Mrs. May wrote down, because she got tired of writing digits, 0 .00379 miles. Well, I figured if I was going to at least write it down, I'd show you I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> All, All right. right. So we're still looking to find the volume of this lake. Now we know the depth in miles. We know the area of the surface in miles. The volume probably going to be that surface area times the depth. So all I have to do is take this 0 .00379 miles and multiply it by that 100 miles squared, which the calculator spits out 0 0.379 miles cubed now. Now, I'm, again, just hanging on to, in my calculator, this whole answer, which is still reading as 0 .37878787 in my calculator. We'll talk more about that at the end of the problem. Now what? All right, so now if we got to keep going, so now we look at the pieces of information we have, and we still have this little piece of information, and now we have the volume. So now we got to think about, we're probably going to need to do some unit, unit analysis, because ultimately, when I look at what the question is asking, I want to know how many kilograms of mercury, in the, mercury are in the lake. Now this is how many micrograms of mercury there are in the lake per milliliter. So the only one of these two numbers that we're given that is a quantity looks like this volume. Let's start a unit analysis problem with the 0.379 miles cubed. So here I go, 0.379, of course I'm writing way too big, this is never going to fit on one line in this <laughs> computer. All right, where can I go from miles cubed, Mrs. May? All right, so miles cubed, when I look back at this conversion right here, I see it's in milliliters. And of course, I remember from the other day that a milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter. So, Ooh, so if I'm we could thinking, get those cubic miles somehow into cubic centimeters, 
I don't know how many centimeters there are in a mile. I'm betting it's a lot. But I do know that in every one mile, there are 5,280 feet. And I know in one foot there's 12 inches. But before we get oh, to either I one of those, jumping ahead. You were, we're going to make sure that we cube that conversion. Right. right? Both oh. the number and the unit. And as Mrs. May said, then the next thing we can do is every one foot is 12 inches. Again, cube it. Got a cube it, not just the number and or not just the unit, but also the number. I'm getting closer. Every 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. Cubed, which of course is the same as a milliliter. Ah, so every 1 centimeter cubed is 1 milliliter. Notice, I don't have to worry about cubing this one. This is a definition. One centimeter cubed is equal exactly to one milliliter. Now what? All right, so now, if every, everything else cancels, except now we have milliliters. But I also look back here and notice this is micrograms per milliliter, which I could write in a different way. I could write that as 0 .500 micrograms for every one milliliter. Ooh, so. Putting that then into the unit analysis box, every one milliliter is equivalent to point, point, there's a, that's a point, five, zero, zero micrograms. So now we're in micrograms of mercury in the lake. We need kilograms of mercury in the lake. That sounds to me like a metric conversion, and uh, my metric conversions that I know all work in like powers of 10 to the third. Uh, that's just how I approach that metric number line. So I know that there are, for instance, a thousand micrograms in every one milligram. Yep. I know there's a thousand milligrams in a gram. <laughs> this is a long problem. I hope your notebook is a lot wider than my computer. And <laughs> I know that there are a thousand grams in every one kilogram. Awesome. Which I think, is hey. that the units that we were shooting for here? That was. Let's go back to the problem and it asked for total mass in kilograms of mercury. I don't know what that number is. <laughs> you guys should. Oh boy. Here would be an opportunity while you're watching this. Uh, go ahead and hit pause. Make sure that uh, you're plugging this in, following your own work. See if you guys get the same answer that Mrs. May does. <laughs> Since I'm letting her do the, the hey, late work on this one. Hey, there's pressure going on here. And make remember, sure when you enter the cubes. Awesome. As you're doing this, remember, this is by, whoa, just kidding. Uh, keep that. Uh, keep, make sure that you cube 5,280 times 5,280 times 5,280 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 2.54 times 2.54 times 2.54 as you're entering that into the computer, computer calculator. And then you can get a number and see if I'm right. This is what I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Wood, I, I, I got around this to significant figures. Ah, now, again, fortunately, ooh, uh, we left the original measurement in. Well, sure <laughs> me. I didn't. So Mr. Wood is going to have to calculate. All right, so Mrs. May, when she left 3.79, miles cubed uh, in the calculator. The calculator spit out. Oh, 789,870, which I am going to round to three significant figures. So I got 700, oh boy, and 90,000 kilograms, which by golly only has two significant figures. <laughs> and I need three. three. But Mr. Woods is checking my math code just in case, you know, screwed it up. It's entirely possible. But let's assume that I'm right until he gets a number and tells me I'm wrong. If this is the case, in fact, the problem, and I have 790,000 and I need three significant figures, you got it. We got to put it into scientific notation. Is that what I got? Oh, yes. I <laughs> love it when I get it right. One, two, three, four, five times 10 to the fifth kilograms is my answer. Awesome. Now, this is actually a great example to demonstrate the point that I was trying to make back here at the beginning, that we could, as we're jotting the problem down, write down a rounded answer, which we did here with our 0 
But the real answer in the calculator was 0 0.0037 uh, just a little bit less. If we save this number in the calculator, and we use that saved number in the calculator to begin our work over here, whatever we've written down as a bookkeeping process, turns out when we get to our final answer, the final answer is a tiny bit different. We end up getting 7894288376, which rounded to just three sig figs, is 789,000. It actually does make a tiny bit of difference. And it is important, and you should be cautious, keep the number in your calculator all the way through the problem. If you're keeping the rule set the same, if the problem is all about multiplication and division, be careful that you don't round again and again and again and write down your rounded answers and use your rounded answers. So this is our best answer. Don't panic if this is what you would have gotten, <laughs> but this is a better answer. Sweet. Uh, all right, now go finish your problems. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs>